Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I hope you had a nice break. It was great to chat with some of you in the break room. I don't know if you uh, had a chance to chat without me as well. I hope, hope you had some fun and met some interesting folks. Oh, I'm always excited at the level of internationalism that we're able to have here. So, so that's great. Um, and we're just going to let people settle in here for a few minutes and I'll give an introduction uh, to our presenter for this section, uh, Nick Gravania, in, in a few minutes and I'll hand it over to him and we'll get started. But in the meantime, there's always those latecomers, aren't there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Wayne Ferguson. How you doing, man? Good to see you. like to see that hair down. Exciting. Exciting look. See what I was saying, Nick? I'm I'm looking here at Wayne and you and your your style, and you guys both have like the coolest shirts. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't really start wearing uh, these these cool shirts as you call them until I moved to uh, New Mexico and then Arizona, where the uh -huh. lifestyle was a little bit more relaxed. You know, coming out of New Jersey, where I was basically born and raised. Actually, I was born in Dub Bronx. And, uh, ah, my yeah, father was born in Dub Bronx. Dub Bronx, okay. Well, you know about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, my dad, he's the first generation born in this country. Uh, he had a very heavy Bronxian accent. Uh, they didn't, if you said the TH word, like three came out tree, right? Nice. Thanks came out as tanks, all that sort of thing. So it took a while to get over that. But uh, I was very much a city life and a city guy for a long time. And then I discovered Hawaiian shirts and uh, I wear them a lot. Never go they back. They make good bowling shirts too. I like to go bowling a lot. So uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty snazzy out there, you know, that sort of Nice. Thing. Nice. I wonder if there's a, I know I met, I met someone the other day. He was, I think he was Canadian or something. And, uh, uh, or maybe from a specific part of Canada, he was wearing like a flannel shirt, you know? And he said it, they called it like the Canadian tuxedo. <laughs> I wonder if they have a similar thing with uh, Hawaiian shirts. Well, I don't know. <laughs> and you know, they're not really all Hawaiian. They're just colorful. I mean, just, they're just colorful. It just kind of appeals to me. I guess Wayne too. I don't know Wayne, but it's pretty cool looking shirt there. Yeah. Well, I have a sponsor. I saw this. It just so happens in Toronto. Yeah, there's, a guy, there's a guy named Tom of Tom's Place, and he's a radio personality. Yeah. And he, he thinks I'm famous because I tune for all these people, but it's just oh. it's kind of bored fame, you know. But yeah, you uh, anyway, You're, you got the kerchief and everything, though. You know. Well, this is my emergency uh, kind of mask. I double oh, mask, I but I also yeah, use yeah. this to, to right. you know. Yeah. So it's kind of like just there now, my new thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, back in this, back in the. Uh, in the 70s, six, late 60s and 70s, I, I played in rock and roll bands. And in 1968, 69, and 70, I was in a psychedelic band as a drummer. Oh, nice. And we had the coolest clothes. It was called Mod in those days. You, you either went hippie, oh. right, with the, with the holes in your knees and that kind of stuff, right? And the, and the leather jackets with all the fringe hanging off your arms. Well, we didn't do that. We were sort of a mod look. So we had uh, those big bell bottom pants and um, sashes around the middle and, uh, and a whole bunch of cool stuff. I, I can't imagine how ridiculous I would look in those outfits now, but uh, they were pretty cool. Oh, yeah. I want to see, I want to see. Pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll, 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 I'll transition into the lecture here. Hopefully maybe you'll pick up some of those instruments in the background though at some point, maybe you'll play the yeah, congas cool or something. Stuff. I know, yeah, it's my little music room back there. So yeah, let me introduce you. I'll mute Wayne Ferguson here and I'll spotlight you because you're the talent here and give a quick introduction. So today, right now, we're getting a little lecture from Nick Gravania. Um, he's going to talking about he's going to be talking about hammer string contact time, the secret to understanding all hammer voicing. And Nick combines a formal engineering background with over 40 years of hands-on experience in piano design, manufacturing, and rebuilding. He's authored numerous articles for the piano trade and has been a featured instructor at piano technical seminars all over the US. 
His business currently revolves around rebuilding and manufacturing custom soundboards for the piano rebuilding trade. So yeah, Wayne, I think you got a good idea what you're about to do. So I'll hand it over to you. Let me know if you need assistance, but I'll take a back seat. Are you handing it over to Wayne or to me? Oh, I'm sorry, Nick. <laughs> hand it over to you, Nick. I'm glad to have Wayne step in. That's, that's great. <laughs> uh, thank you all for showing up and thank you, Ethan, for the invite. It's always a, an honor and a privilege to be asked to, to instruct. Uh, I enjoyed the last session with uh, Paul McNulty. I thought it was very, very cool, very interesting. And uh, I think he spoke very well to us. I mean, obviously, he's a scholar and a heavy duty practitioner in his, in his field and that he spoke to us in very simple common terms and so and with a sense of humor too which i appreciated i uh <laughs> i guess coming to new jersey uh, anybody that's funny i was taught to believe anything they said and i passed that on to my kids and they'll be getting out of the sanitarium sometime next week just a joke <laughs> i say the problem is i can't hear the laughter because wayne's looking like i'm serious but continuing <laughs> um this, the, his, his uh, presentation was a lot of Q&A, which is cool. And I hope to get to that uh, later on in, in the session. But in yeah, by the to, way, you, yeah. you just let me know whenever you want. I mean, I'll introduce questions as they come, yeah. if, if they yeah. seem appropriate. But if you want people to chime in, I can let them unmute. All those things are options. Yeah. You just, okay. just let me know. Where I feel I have a stopping point, I, I'd like to do that. But I want to get through my PowerPoint and some of the other things, because I want to lay the background for the kinds of questions I might be expecting. And so it's more structured. This is a much more structured program uh, than, uh, than Paul's. And so uh, I wanna get through it at a reasonable pace so we have plenty of time uh, to continue with the questions that are more focused based, to, based on what I'm on what we're talking about, which is um, uh, voicing. And, you know, for years and years we had, um, classes, PTG classes and others like it, uh, invoicing. And pretty much we did what we were told, especially 30 years ago. <clears throat> you know, you put the needles here and something's supposed to happen. You put them in a different place and something different is supposed to happen. And I found over these many years that when I did that exact thing, not necessarily the things that were supposed to happen did happen. So I sought for a sort of common denominator. What is it that happens with any hammer, whether you're hardening or whether you're needling, uh, the shoulders were quote unquote softening, which doesn't always soften the hammer, let's face it, right? If it's a good hammer, it's gonna do something else. So I'm gonna move on to my um, PowerPoint and we'll go through it and I'll read what's, what you see there. And if you have uh, pens and pads and you wanna write jot down a note or two or something, uh, go ahead. Uh, the other thing is there's some repetitiveness and some redundancy in the, in the program because I've learned that I learn better that way and I feel like I'm teaching better that way when certain things are repeated, perhaps a little differently, but uh, there's got to be some of that, you know, hammering, hammering away at a certain theme uh, from a different uh, perspective sometimes. So let me go to uh, share screen here and, and I, I've learned how to hide this on top. Yeah, it's all looking good from our end. Here we go. Okay. And so I can drag these guys off to the side. And so here we have the shape of piano tone, as it's called. And this first screen, uh, the idea here is that if you have a fundamental tone and you have a second partial, right, which is the octave above, you have a third partial, which is the fifth above that. In other words, the twelfth from the fundamental, then the fourth overtone is the double octave and then this is a third above that and then that's a minor third above that the sixth partial so these are really the main ones that we're interested in hearing uh in our piano tone they're certainly inherent already in the vibrating string once you start to get to the seventh eighth and ninth partials those are so close to each